Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to session four. four. Yeah. This is your 2019 beta test report. Um, the three of us have uh, been testing the beta since October, and we're coming into the final phase of the beta testing now, and we're here to present some of the new changes going on with the beta cycle here going on. So a little bit about, um, I'm Todd Cruz, I'm the 384078. We use a Java code, Brandon here, 7432. Yeah, that'd be right. Labview, and Chris, Jack of all trades here, kind of attached to a team, kind of not. <laughs> and he does C++ and a lot of networking stuff and radio configuration and all other stuff. So we're all mentors on our teams and we also volunteer as CSAs during the regional events. So we're just going to do a couple things here, just kind of explain what the beta is. Every year first uh, puts out uh, requests, you can put requests to be a beta testing team and if you're looking for that, encourage it. Usually Minnesota has around five beta teams every year. And uh, since we've been doing beta testing, we got invited back this past year to join them again for 2019. So <clears throat> the goals of the beta testing is to overview software changes and documentation. So we're, we're asked to go through the documentation. Does it make sense? Is this in the right order? What issues did you have? You know, what can we improve on? So when they release this on the kickoff day, you'll get all good documentation that's hopefully 99.9% .9 of the way true that you can install the software and get up and running with our little issues. So uh, install changes ordered in the robot tool, the radio configuration, which they didn't really do anything with this uh, beta, um, the driver station changes, and then the big one this year is for the visual code IDE with the Gradle deployment. And so we're going to have code examples and questions and discussion. At any point, you guys have a question, let us know. We'll stop our presentation because we want to make sure that you guys are getting the information that you desire to be successful in the 2019 season. So again, this, uh, they have, uh, and I, don't, I didn't double check all these numbers, but first has a handful of teams across the United States and overseas. And 26, four, uh, 28, 46, the Fire Bears were doing beta, 38, 40, slash 70, 68, and then uh, 74, 32 was doing beta. So it just, this just gives you the goals of the test. They're just trying to get a sizable group to get feedback on their documentation materials and, and features that they release. Not big there. Again, this just talks a little bit, uh, long teams to get understanding. And part of our beta, is the requirement is to present this to teams and we use jumpstart as our means to get the word out about the beta stuff and so you guys are uh, in the loop and kind of get a first-hand look before you see it in January 5th when it all released to the world. Uh, I'm not going to get too much in here that it wasn't very very specific on the um, network tables and that but there's some little issues in that they had. So the one big change that right off the bat they were trying to do is streamline the, the installation. And so what they created was this uh, one-click installer. So with this, the first thing I want to say is, is there anybody in here using the Visual Code now in the alpha version? Oh. Code of it. So if you are, I, the first thing I would do is make sure you uninstall that. Uninstall it. By good practice, and Chris had a nice big video, I think a year ago maybe, yep. on that, uninstall all your NI stuff, all your stuff from the previous season. So when we look at some of the stuff, I create a virtual box, and that's what I did all my beta testing on, just to have a clean install for the kickoff and not have any beta on there. So uninstall that, because what this is going to do is download everything and do offline installer stuff on here. And this is going to do your JDK, the Gradle, all, all this stuff in this one, one click. click here. So for you guys, after you install it, I would check the visual code on there. So you would first hit select download visual code and then that would become enabled there. And it will go and download it and then just do execute all. Yes. So that's installing actual Visual Studio? Then? Visual mm -hmm. code, yes it will. It's literally meant to be a, one, a push button. One thing. thing. Okay, so that's normally not a very free thing. A Visual yeah. Studio code is. Visual Studio code, it's just like Eclipse, it's a right, free thing. Correct. No, yeah, this is visual, visual code. code. Yep. 
Visual Studio Code is their free. It's Everyone not the professional it. like I have. <clears throat> the lightweight Autodesk light, whatever, it's got the free stuff in it. This will, and I'm not sure how they're going to do this because the KOP doesn't typically have a DVD in it more. I think it does the lab view stuff for an eye. So w when the, the season starts, you're going to go to screen steps. And they'll have the links steps. on there. So if you, maybe, okay, um, here, let me give you this. Oh, you should bust them out. Yeah, let me do that. Uh, um, so at the beginning of the season, if you guys are wondering where to get the software from, uh, you can always go to first screen mm -hmm. steps. I thought it were open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's on here, so go ahead. Yep. Anybody needs that? Three people? Okay, sounds good. We're good? Yeah. Uh, go to the screen steps, and they will have the instructions as to how to download the editor. Yep. It'll probably just be a link to download it on there. They typically have no, the NI usually comes in the DVD mm -hmm. pack. They'll have everything to do the NI, lab view for the driver's station, all that. Lab stuff. view download doesn't change. Same as every year prior to it. So you have to download lab view. Two things. Is there, one is like, what is it actually installing when you hit check the Gradle box? And two is, can you, is the WPI Live extension the same extension as the other one that's out now? So it'll just have to be separately installed. It'll be a separate install. No. So with this, you'll do the ins you'll do your the lab view stuff, the NI stuff, same as you did before. So it'll include your Robo image and the Robo Robo Real Imager, and it will include the WP uh, the sorry the driver the station, driver station yeah. code now the the no that probably doesn't come with us. I think the shuffleboard and all that will be part of the WPI installer. So it'll be just the, in the the game pad stuff and all the extras so there. It puts all the sources in there so you can build and deploy your code to the RoboReal. Like, yeah. Cross thread or? What? Cross thread or what? Is it? It's all executed with the, it, put it on top of the visual code so you can build all your libraries. It, it, it's building an environment so Gradle can do the deployment is what it's okay. doing. Yep. Yeah. So you don't need to have the Gradle files in the project or anything? No. No, no, no. You're talking about the alpha? No, the alpha had the off the separate ins installer to do the extensions. No. No. This says this, this is this is all completely separate. They bundled it all together, and we'll get to it. We're going to show you the actual screens where they installed they on probably it. Should, the, the one click installer really is meant for the development environment, not so much the Robo Rio or nope. your driver station. For that, you'll still need to do your Robo Rio image and then your, your well, it used to be called Lifeboat. Now it's uh, Diagnostics. Yeah. 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 That's separate. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. And it's Windows only on the Mac? Nope. Did you do it on the Mac? Could you get it going on your Mac? Uh, I haven't tried on the Mac yet. They have a Mac install on yes. Linux on there. Yep. You, it's, yes. It's, you, when you go to the download site, you'll have to pick the right one. Okay. They'll have the Windows full, full version installer. They tried a, an upgrade package. It failed yeah. horribly right away. And then they pulled it off. Do you have a question yeah. over here? <clears throat> go ahead. Uses yep. And so does 2052. No, no, yeah, it shall work. Okay. But Gradle is doing more than just uh, just doing, yeah, it's just doing the install. It's also you guys doing the JDK through Gradle as well down to the to the Rio. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's doing the same thing. So. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I think King Tech does it too. Twenty one sixty nine does the intelligent and, as well. Yeah. yeah. So. Follow the directions. If you follow the README file, I have not had an issue with just doing this installer. Again, it'll do the JDK and all that stuff, and when we get into the visual code, you don't have to worry about going in and setting the home variable and all that as well. This is, takes care of it all. So since there's a new installer, do you have to delete like, everything on your computer and like, wipe it? Or? Well, I would yeah, I'd advise starting from a clean slate. So remove your JDK, remove your Eclipse, remove all of that stuff. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you want to do it by nuking the machine and rebuilding it, so be it. But you want to get rid of everything from last year. Yeah. And your WPI. It, the other, the ones yep. that were attached with the Eclipse in their folders, it's, it doesn't bother it. I left Eclipse on there. 
and it hasn't messed with because it's they restructured the whole where they're putting everything. So it's under the user uh, folder yeah. of public documents. It's all in a whole separate, and they put everything together, and I can show you that afterwards. You don't have to, but it's <clears throat> highly recommended. Especially the NI stuff. I can't stress that enough. The NI stuff is very important to, to get rid of that stuff. And the, if you did the alpha code. One of the other guys, uh, Corey, down the, the other room here, was doing some beta with us, and he, he had all kinds of issues, and he did not install the, the alpha code, and it messed up totally. Uh, so we'll continue on with the RoboReal imaging tool here. Um, has everyone used this, or is there anyone who has not used the imaging tool or know what the robot imaging tool is? Okay. The imaging tool here, there's an icon on the desktop, and it's been that way since 2017. They started putting it on it so you didn't have to go find it in the tree structure on your windows. So you can just double click this, and this is well to put a fresh new image on the Rubble Reel that's going to match this year's all the libraries and stuff that WPI is putting together to talk to the robot. So when you double click, it's going to come up with this screen right here on here after it launches on here. And the first thing it's going to try and do is connect to your robot reel. So the robot reel has a port on there, which we always use the A to B connector on it, USB cable to your laptop, the little port there. And then it will find it and it will say what the current image is on there. So you see it on, yep, no, I got it on my, I got it on my, Computer, we'll switch to my lap to the beta stuff in a minute. Well, we're gonna go through some presentation first a little bit, but it'll show you. You can see on there it'll say current image is FRC Robo Real 2008 or V16, right? So that was the imager last year, and so then it's gonna when you click on well, we'll go to the next one here. This will talk make more sense right here. Make sure your Robo Real is selected so you connect it to it. And when you hit the format target, you'll see you can select a new image. So if you don't uninstall or thing, you might have 2008 show up in that folder. So that's why I want to caution you. If you do it and clean everything out, you should only have the current version out there. And it's, we're on 7 right now. Who knows? It might be 12, 14 the time the season kicks off January 5th. If you have any questions on what's current, the screen steps page does have a Well, keep the version. current, yes. So you get your robot, you put your team number in there on the three location there. Make sure you put your correct team number on there, you might have trouble connecting. And then you would select the, the image you want to do and you'd hit the button reformat. During the time you're doing reformat, just like everything else, you want to make sure you're power doesn't get disconnected, you don't mess with the USB ports on your window so it disconnects. Yep. So basically what you're saying is basically factor reset and then install it basically? On your computer? Yes. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you want to be sure everything is clear, that's one way to do it. But otherwise, uninstalling all of last year's stuff should be good enough. Yep. Because we all know that when you uninstall things, there's still stuff in the registry. <laughs> but that's a different yeah. topic. Yeah. Questions there on imaging there? Um, this more or less posted in not to teach you how to do it, but um, anyone familiar with the web-based interface than the web server on the RoboReel from previous years? 172, 22, 11, 2. Yeah. Andrew? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, this year, it's not going to be available for anything. And this, what you see right here on the screen is all you're going to see. You will not see no CAN bus interfaces, nothing. All you'll see is a quick shot of the MAC address and what your Rebel Reel is. Yep. And just a note on that, this isn't Silverlight anymore, uh, so you don't need IE, so you'll, but you will need Chrome or... Firefox and Mozilla works there. Yep, yep. So no more IE, no more... And I, I don't think it'll work in Edge, but Microsoft Edge, I won't use it for anything but yep. looking at PDFs. Yep. Mm -hmm. And downloading Chrome. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so. How do you identify your can? Oh, that'll be. Next slide. Yep. Yep. So, 
Just be aware of that. So, who's familiar with the old Phoenix lifeboat? Anyone use that last year? A few of you guys did? This year, it's going to be on the desktop. Should create an uh, icon called Phoenix Diagnostics. So what they did is first has been separating more and more to these third-party um, setups. So across the road, Electronics has uh, been handling all their stuff in the last couple of years. They, last year, they kind of broke the libraries out and broke away from the WPI library, and they're managing everything itself. They already had a version of this in that lifeboat. It was mainly geared for their non-FRC stuff, their hero line. And so what they did this year is they're like, we'll take it on. So after you do your robo um, image on your robo reel, the next thing you should be going is to this dashboard here and installing the Phoenix libraries. Because if you don't, you will not see any CAN devices out there, especially the CTRE stuff. You will not see it. Installing the drivers for your CAN devices on your robo reel. So again, keep your USB connected down there. And you can see it says lost comms trying to connect to, and it'll even tell you the IP address and the port number. Um, also on the, and this got out of order, I guess, see. Um, <clears throat> on the, the other change for the Robo Reel is the firmware version. So on the web base, you used to be able to go in there and do the firmware update on the web base server. There's no longer available. It is available on your imaging tool. And I can show you when we flip to the uh, virtual box. But there's another option for firmware version on there, and you can update your Robo Reel. Now, with the new install right now, it's six. You'll see five and six, I think, on the install. If your robot reel's got three on there, I'd leave it unless you really want to do it. I've went to six. I haven't seen any different issues yet, but I haven't really ran robots around to see if there's any issues. We put ours at six. I, nothing new that I can see. So this is where it probably on the inspection uh, for the robot inspection sheet, we'll probably just say a minimum firmware version on that. So this is in that Phoenix diagnostic. One tool for doing all. Yep, so you, you can see your change ID, change name, and the blink function. I don't have to go log in on there, do admin, bank blast, you know, blank password. You can just go to this tool. Once you have everything installed on there, you can go to this page on the CAN devices, and they all show up. It'll give you all the firmware versions, your manufacturing date, your boot revision, and all that on there. You don't have to even look at the role. You can just look right here and what they all are. And then you can update the firmware and everything right here. Do yourself uh, test modules on here as well. So there shows a little close up of, you know, you click on the three dots there next to the hero there. And you can pick it on. Your memory can devices can be 0 to 62. But for our point, we would say 1 to 63 or 62. Don't ever use 0 as one of your features. So the same thing, once you do this, this part would be the same. It would automatically open up and look at what firmware, and you select your firmware from that. Don't forget to do your PCM and PDB, which should be up to date because they haven't changed it in two years. It's 140 for the, uh, the PDB and 165 for the PCM. PCM. Yep. Pretty straightforward there. Everyone's done firmware flashing before? Is If anything's fuzzy, let me... Stop me, sorry, because I might ramble on too fast for you guys. Everyone good? What did you say that the version have to be? Oh, no, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm just saying that PCM... Let's put the current one yeah, in. The PCM and the PDP haven't changed firmware in two years, as we're just saying. Yeah. So if you've used them in the last two years, you're good. More than likely to be up to date. Yeah. Do you still connect to the access stuff? No. Well, yes, you do. Yes, yeah. to the CAN bus. Yeah. We could sh Does it work over Ethernet? It should. Uh, works over, should work over USB and Ethernet. Okay. Yeah. So we just probably can show it. Great. Uh, the new changes, they're going to Java 11, and I've been seeing, the, the beta we're testing now is 4.9 on the Gradle, but I've been seeing chatter of the 5.0, that are, and I'm wondering if they're not trying to squeeze that out. Mm -hmm. The shuffleboard and all that's moving towards all that. So, I mean, we're up to date to this today. The beta test is supposed to be ending with these pathfinding stuff and all that this week. 
but right now it's using the Gradle 49. So we'll see where they land this ship. So it's all Java 11, your shuffleboard and all that will not work if it, you have another version of it installed. But if you do the one click installer, it'll take care of it for you. So shuffleboard's a, a, a Java thing, so that works okay if you're using a different uh, yeah. system here. You, you can use any of the, la the, any of the dashboards, LabVIEW, Smart Dashboard, Shuffleboard, with any programming language. Right. It's just the other ones don't use Java, but the Shuffleboard and, and smart, dashboard. smart Dashboard do yeah. this. But use Shuffleboard. If you're not using the LabVIEW, mm -hmm. use Shuffleboard. So the, the, this is basically the same. So if you haven't seen this, this is, this is actually a screenshot of Beta 1 of the driver station there. Yeah, it's Beta 1 with version 4. So it's basically the same, but it shows you everything on there, um, your versions of it. Remember, if you don't do all your firmware updates, you'll get inconsistent right there. And you have to go to the diagnostic tool and see which one's not in sync with the rest of the firmware versions on there. Yeah, and please do that, because when you get inspected, the robot inspector is going to go to this, and they're going to look for a minimum. If you can't see it, then you have to pull out the tool, and you have to figure it out, and just get them all to the same version. The FMS actually pings that and tells us too that there's something. It usually doesn't hamper you, but it's not a safe and good practice. <laughs> uh, so, you know, this just tells the different things on that and diagnostics. If you've seen the, the driver station before, that's pretty much the same. They don't see a valid IP, you have 10 dot whatever number, hit, tell them to hit that button. Okay. Um, here's getting into the visual code and adding the Phoenix uh, libraries, managing your third party uh, libraries into your robot code here for the visual code. And, and I don't know, I assume it's open to the public, but the GitHub site for CTR is fantastic. And you guys use that or been on their GitHub site? They have code examples, they have documentation on there. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even work to put them on your hard drive anymore because they're always up to date yeah. online. So bookmark it, use it often. They have all this on there right now. On there with more documentation coming after the kickoff. But you click, you would go down and you click on the Bill Gradle there and you right click on there and you'll say manage vendor uh, libraries. And then on top it will come up and you can install. And so once you install the CTRE software net, you'll just want to do an offline install. So a lot of this is, you, it already downloads it down to the hard drive and then it just references it. As long as you don't go in there and mess with the file structure currently on the from the in original install location. So you install new libraries and it'll pop up. So this is one version back. CTRE is at 510 right now. I expect maybe one or two more releases, probably at least two before kickoff. And then you hit OK. And then it will automatically install that on there. And so when you bring projects into it, it'll ask you, do you want to install the Gradle and stuff on there? And we'll see if we can get that to pop up on mine. Um, should we just go down or switch over? There's not much new. If you want to talk about yeah. any of the LabVIEW stuff, we're going to show you some of that stuff live in a minute. Yeah, so LabVIEW changes for this year is about zero to none. Uh, for us to get our 2018 code to work, we opened it in 2019 and pressed run. That's it. Nothing's changed for LabVIEW. Uh, they tried and, or they went and did a little more on the camera server, but they've done that pretty much every year. Any code that you've written last year, you can import right in. Nothing's really changed systematically on that. About. <laughs> and when we're seeing that on both sides of Java, C++, mm -hmm. and all that, WPI, WPI has, I don't think they did anything this past year, except build mm -hmm. the Gradle. 
There hasn't that, been no mm -hmm. substantial uh, changes APIs. in the API itself. Mm -hmm. So anything you've been using, there's no syntax change like last year where you had to do the different hops and skips to do a Talon, you know, the WPI versus the Talon SRX. Yeah, the, I think some the, of the backward do. compatibility is going to be removed this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably some slight things, and maybe you'll find one or two projects that might not have that in there, but nothing that I ran into. The mm -hmm. code I've imported has not even remotely crashed. So that's basically the on that. Uh, we'll we'll talk about Brandon will talk a little more about this. this is the one thing that's supposed to be on this week's beta. Yep. Testing plan. Yeah, so they have a version of this right now. Their official beta release is a little bit crashy, but uh have you guys heard of motion profiling or seen the team run it? No. Kinda sorta. So this is WPI's version of Pathfinder. It takes a little, this might not know what this means, but it takes Jackie's Pathfinder logic, puts it into a visual representation. You can have all your paths over there on the right-hand side, build your autonomous on the top, and it'll export it into CSV files, or if you're using Java or C, they can put it right in your code. Mm -hmm. Why would somebody want to use this? What do uh, they do? Autonomous, uh, high speed, very accurate, uh, you can turn, you can do smooth turns, so instead of stopping or turning or kind of just guessing on your turns, you can do very smooth turns. Uh, if you've ever seen the Cheesy Poofs doing autonomous, Robo Wranglers, uh, 5172 uses it. You see how they do those slight turns or do 90 degree turns on the fly. You can save a lot of time. I know, or at least on our robot, we can get from the left position to the right scale in six seconds by using motion profiling. Very tough to use. This makes it a lot easier than how you used to have to do it. But this will integrate very nicely with Java and C code and just building it right in. Are they going to update it for like a new game field this year? Yes. Yep. Yep. They're not going to reveal that to us. Yeah, they don't, they don't give us a new game field. <laughs> Sadly, they don't. But they will have the new game right field now, on there. Right now, I can pull up when we switch to it. It'll come up, and it'll have a drop down. Let's say 2018. I assume they're going to have 2019. Maybe they'll pull 18 mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so could you could you could you run it in teleop and get the uh, you know feed it the, the encoders so, so that you can do a live run and see what it is what the encoder picks? Uh, you, you can do that in uh, autonomous in a uh, periodic task or wherever that is no, in I, Java. He's, oh. You're saying record it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. That's how the Fire Bears do it. Okay. Twenty eight forty six okay. does that. Okay. Yeah. I want him to share it with me because I thought it'd be cool. I just record just, the driving of it. Don't know if this can do it. All right. yeah. yeah, this one, I mean, if That'd you record it. Later. This will yeah. just, basically, you're clicking and dragging and setting up your move some. You got to mm -hmm. set up how wide your base, your drivetrain is, and how mm -hmm. fast you want to accept and decel on there. Does this kind of thing need a gyroscope to run? No, it does not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope, it's strictly on coders. It'll, there's versions that can help it if you have a gyro. But for the bare minimum, you don't need a gyro. You need two Talon SRXs and two encoders. Anybody not know what this is used for? Anybody have any questions on what somebody would want to see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can draw your path, and then if you do a recording job, or where it's like when you bring your data to the test, um, if you export to a CSV, then how do you, what do you do with that when you're using the encoder? So you import your CSV, and it comes in as uh, encoder, distance, velocity, and time step. Inside of the SRX library, they have a function that's called motion profiling. You can send it to the SRX in something called the buffer. It can hold 300 points. So if you do a time step of 0.05 seconds, you don't have to clear buffer during autonomous. It'll send it there, and it will do internal math in there with PID and a ton of other stuff that makes it follow being like, I need to be at this distance at this speed at this time, how do I need to change my motors to accomplish this? Yeah, you can pull that up. And so I had a project in here. Uh, See if it's not going to crash. Yeah, you did not. Yeah, you got the the wrong. I, you got you got the crashy version. Yeah. <laughs> so right here, I set up different paths, mm -hmm. and then. 
Uh, see, I can left, right. So I was playing with it, right? So you can profile it out. But then I can come up here and then change it. See, I can drag it and say, oh, I want to go down here, which is in Thomas <laughs> mode would screw it all up. So you gotta, yeah, there's, a, there's some quirky thing. Obviously, this is. So this, yeah. this is alpha. Okay. Yeah, this is the alpha. Yeah. Yeah. Outside the field. The controller, the input. Here's what I want you to do. Yeah. You're talking about control loop stuff. Well, yeah. 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 Let's say there's a barrier there, and you, it wasn't. How do you make sure it, it, it accomplishes the task? If it hits a barrier, it's going to try to keep moving it, but so. it's not going to. You can do that two different ways. One is if your path is off by so much, you can be like, okay, we're just going to abort the path, just stop. Or you could say you have a Navex with uh, acceleration. You could calculate the G-force, what you average, hit the wall at. And if you've exceeded that amount of Gs, you can shut your robot autonomous off and tell Tele up. Uh, internally on the SRX, there's, nothing, there's, there's portion that says, okay, I've either, it's called I've overrun or I've underrun my path. You can pull that and figure out what it's doing, but it's only a Boolean true-false. So you could figure out, okay, I'm at this point. My encoder needs to be at 5,643 rotations. If you're greater or less than, say, 3,000 ticks or 4,600 4, or something like that, you can be like, okay, I want to stop motion profiling. I want to clear my buffer, and I want to stop right here. We can go over that more uh, next session, session five. I'm teaching okay, an hour class on it. The question you're asking is, though, is, if it, something interferes with it, does it compensate? Wait, does it compensate? No. no. But you can, I mean, is there an indicator saying it's not accomplishing it when you bail? Uh, you just have to, code. yeah, you have to write that on your own. Yeah. But there's no indicator in, 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 in this platform so, that, that gives you. Or if the encoder code. fails, stop reading. Yeah, well, that's not a great question. That is just to give it the plan. Here's what I want you to do. Yeah. It's not meant to be, here's all your contingencies. If you're a really, really advanced team, you, you get interfered with, you can recalculate that path on the fly. There's like two teams in the world that can do that consistently, and they win world championships year after year. And no one from Minnesota is even close to that. But we'll be going over that a little more next session yeah so uh, when you do this you'll have all these questions mm -hmm. and this says in feet so you gotta be careful you don't put oh it's 12 inches and i put mm -hmm. 12 feet It'd be ridiculous on your path but mm -hmm. this uh, this drop down here either they're gonna remove it and just put the deep space on there or maybe they'll keep power up on there who knows mm -hmm. but that's all in here and then you fill this out and then that's where you can get to it as well but that, then you can go back to each one of these and change it up a little bit and re-download it. And you can do a flip as well, too, on here. No, I can't yeah, get back to where it goes. Mm -hmm. And then you can do a duplicate, and then you can have a second one. Yeah. But Is there a way to tell how long an action will take to program, like time-wise? It might not be cool for two seconds. Yes, uh, yes and not. So there isn't a visual on this one. There's another version. It's like Vanica's. Motion profile generator has a graph that shows your motor velocities and stuff like that. This one might get some type of version in there, but what you can do if you, they don't put the graphs in there is you look at your CSV file. Okay, if I have 100 lines in my CSV file at 0.05 seconds, you can just do the math and be like, okay, I'm, it's going to take this long to run my path. Excel can do that if you need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go to the shuffleboard and Yeah, the so if you got questions, keep asking. We'll just, I can poke around here. I'm not sure how many other slides we got, but um, the shuffleboard here, uh, the one great thing about the new shuffleboard is, um, let's shrink it down a little bit here. Let's see. Am I it really shrunk it here today? I'm not sure why it's not showing on the way here. But I lost half my stuff here. Oh, I just. Ah, uh, yes. 
Um, this is in my virtual box. Forgot. Here we go. That's there why it's go. looking ridiculous. So one of the requests I put in last year, and I'm glad they put it in, is we had a question when we were doing CSA that the mechanical guys mounted the camera really goofy, and they wanted to see if we could rotate in the software. That was not available, but this year it is. And so most of these widgets, and how many have used the shuffleboard yet? You liking the shuffleboard? I think it's great. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, it's gotten better from what you guys have used last year. <laughs> The save, it, well, then you got to make sure you turn the auto populate off too on the tab, which they've gotten a lot better because then the help button wouldn't work and all that. There's some other issues. But if you right click and go to edit properties, you can um, take this right here and you can rotate your camera view. So I can rotate it right here. And this actually works on the smart dashboard as well. But you can just rotate your camera around, don't have to worry about the mechanical engineer says, I only can be mounted here. And uh, yeah, you know, it might be still an angle, a 45 degree angle, but at least you can flip it 90s. And you can change the color of the uh, crosshair. I wish you could widen the crosshair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, sometimes you might want to see it a little thicker. It depends on what you're trying to do with the camera at that time. Uh, can you reposition the crosshair? No, it's in the center. Right, and then you can you can take off the controls, or you can turn off the crosshair. So, and features are all in there. And then here you can change your compression and everything right here without doing a code change on here. And then hit deploy on here. Let's see if it's sharpen up a little bit. I love when you can just drag the widgets around. Walk to the lab view. I'll do it on that side. You <laughs> That's all I do. So you can change your resolution, your frames per second on here, just by changing the values right here and just hitting apply. And it still give you a readout here and what you're taking for bandwidth here. Because you're creeping on up, which you don't want to do because we'll come and find you as CSAs. But you see it's got a 320 by 240. I very highly doubt that anybody will ever need any better resolution than that. If you are using this for a driver, you want as small and as fast as you can get. Oof, duh. Uh, <laughs> pixel art. I changed the compression. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the driver, they want, they want to know what it is now. So look at that. See now. Change the compression. Got 40 per second. No, one point. Hey, so the, if you haven't used Shuffleboard, like last year, here's the game specific information, but then also right here, it tells you if I'm connected to the driver station, if I'm connected to the FMS, and I don't remember what code I got in here, but it shouldn't do anything. Okay. So then it'll say teleop right here. So and you can watch that. Behind the driver station, when you're watching Thomas code, if you want to push stuff out, you can watch what it's doing and see if it's doing what you needed to do as well there. So though Chris is talking about this button right here. There it is right there. This is beta 2 here. Visual code briefly here. Um, this is it. You got this button right here. This is where you can create new projects. This is the start tool where I can start the shuffleboard, um, robot builder, all that stuff right here. You can set your uh, team number right here, deploy your code, and there's a lot of quick function keys you can do to, to uh, update. And I'll have a check for updates, kind of like Eclipse had. You got the button here. Who knows if it's going to work because it doesn't work during beta. <laughs> but, uh, and here's another one for your manager libraries, too, on your offline on there. So everything else is the same. Yep. Can you install this stuff now just to mess with it? You can the install alpha it. version. Yeah. Okay. But realize that the alpha and the beta are two different things. Yeah. So if you learn what the alpha is now and you're used to it, it's changing in the beta. But the beta should be similar to the deployed code. Okay, so if you're doing command-based programming and you'll have your robot, your subsystems, and all your commands folders, 
That's exactly where it's going to show up underneath the FRC robot. The one, one I want you to pay attention to is see this main right here I clipped on? Right here, this main? It says right here, do not put anything there. Please, please, please do not put anything in there. Okay? This is first is using this with the gradle and all that to push it down to start your whole robot code. And so they can do whatever threads they need to do in the robot reel. Don't put any code in there. Okay? Don't just ignore it, <laughs> okay? I just want to make that disclaimer because someone's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And you won't have very nice results. Other than that, it's the same. Um, visual code, you can do this though. You can step down your program by doing this over here. And then on projects and stuff, you want to do this. You want to open up a folder. And I don't remember what I have in here. I got all these test ones. And that's how I'll open a new project. Be, be cautious of little pop-ups down in this corner here. Some things will come up in that corner to ask you if you want to install something or not. But start taking a close look just to get familiar with that. So thank you guys. If you have any questions, let us know or else good luck in the 2019 season.